we are just about to enter the territory of covalent bonds. But before that, let's try to understand a couple of energy changes. Now, how is it important? So what do we do is we basically consider these two hydrogen atoms and we start at a place wherein these two are not considering, uh, sorry, are not experiencing any force because of each other on itself or, th or themselves. Right? So if they are not experiencing any force, right, theoretically, right, Practically, uh, uh, we'll discuss about that. Just wait a minute. Theoretically, let's say they are not experiencing any force on each other. So we know that force essentially is equals to K Q1 Q2 by R square, right? So if theoretically, they are not experiencing any force on each other, right? If they are not experiencing any force on each other, then theoretically, right? If this is zero, then this has to be theoretically infinity, right? And that is why we have the R is equals to listed at infinity over here. What I mean by R is this, the inter-nuclear distance. All right, so I'm really sorry. I forgot to acquaint you guys with the graph here. On the y-axis, we have potential energy. On the x-axis, we have inter-nuclear distance. Now, what does inter mean? So think about inter-school competitions. Sorry, uh, inter-class competitions, right? So remember this, an inter-class competition, think about like a dramatics inter-class competition, inter-class inter competition between two or three or more classes. Or think about the school fest where you have to set up a stall, a food stall, a gaming stall, or some other stall, right? Between classes, think about that. So inter-class competition is an intra-school competition, right? Think about it. Inter-class competition, right? Or you can say that uh, inter-student competition within a particular class can be called as intra-class competition. Within a class, students are competing against each other. So inter-student competition, intra-class competition. So inter-nuclear distance means the distance between two nuclei. We are starting from a distance where they are not experiencing any force on each other. Right? So theoretically, the distance turns out to be infinity. Practically, the distance is not infinity, but we do not need to go into that. We, in our syllabus, in the 11, 12th and J syllabus, we consider the theoretical case only. Now, if you remember, we had these forces at play. Right? And if you remember, we talked about in the first session that as these are brought closer, experimentally it has been found that the total attractive force are more than the total repulsive force. That is, in conclusion, there is net attractive force. Right? So what is happening? We are bringing them closer. There is a net attractive force. These body, these atoms, these bodies, these species give in to those attractive forces and they move even closer. What happens? Attraction, giving in to the attraction, potential energy decreases. Think about the ball coming down. Potential energy decreases. So what do we have here? They are moving closer, right? We are moving towards left on the x-axis, the nuclei coming closer. They are giving in to the attraction. And as a result, as a result, what happens? Potential energy reduces and you see that as the distance basically goes towards the left, that is decrease goes towards the left, right? the potential energy reduces, goes down and that is why we have such a curve happening over here. Right? Okay, so this is what we have. Now what happens is, Right? It basically keeps moving closer and closer and closer, but as they come closer, what happens? Soon, the repulsive force starts to kick in and starts to really uh, being considerable. Till now, the repulsive force was almost inconsiderable, but as they move closer and closer, the repulsive force starts to come into the picture. And now, beyond this point, if we move them further closer to each other, Right? What happens? Slowly, slowly, the repulsive force, right? Now, as we move them closer, attractive force is increasing, right? But now what is happening is, repulsive force is also increasing, but the rate at which the repulsive force is increasing, 
the rate at which the repulsive force is increasing is more than the rate at which the attractive force is increasing, right? Is more than, right? This repulsive force, right? This attractive force. So this is increasing at a higher rate as compared to the attractive force, the repulsive force. And so there comes a point of time wherein after be, be making them come closer and closer and closer to each other hypothetically, right? What turns out is that there comes a point of time wherein the attractive force balances the repulsive force. So there is no net attractive or net repulsive force. The net force is zero, right? Be, be, before this point, between, right? Uh, before this point, this point is the point of zero net force. So in this region, there was a net attractive force. Obviously, we can uh, not consider the infinity in that discussion. All right. Right? So this is the point where is there, where there is no attractive or repulsive force, right? So this is the point that right? they were coming closer, right? All right. So now what do you think will happen if we move them even closer? What do you think will happen if we move them even closer? Now this time around, if you move them even closer, the repulsive forces become more than the attractive forces in absolute amounts. Right? And those, so this time around, in this particular range over here, what happens? There is a net repulsive force. And now, if you have essentially a net repulsive force, you have two bodies repelling each other and you're trying to bring them closer and closer. What should happen to the potential energy? Potential energy should increase, right? And that is what we have over here. Correct, right? And as you bring them closer and closer and closer, obviously the two nuclei start to repel each other too much. And there is also electron cloud, electron cloud repulsion of the two atoms. And essentially, right, with a very, very small reduction in the internuclear distance, we have a significant increase in the potential energy. Right? So what is happening? Let's go back over here. Let's go back over here. What was happening here? Right, we were bringing them closer, closer, attraction, bringing them even closer, attraction, bringing them even closer, repulsion starts to kick in, right? Repulsion starts to kick in. Now, what is happening? The net attraction force is still there, but the net attraction value, right? The net attraction force is still there, right? This is the attractive force, this is the repulsive force. The net attraction force is still there, but if we bring them even closer, the gap starts to reduce and there comes a point of time where the two atoms are neither attracting each other, neither repelling each other. Basically, they are stuck together at this point of time and this is what we called as the chemical bond and essentially this is this internuclear distance here is termed as the bond length, right? So this 74 picometers here turns out to be the bond length in the H2 molecule. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.